Ratio, Rates, and Proportions. We're going to talk about rates in this video with your host, me, Catherine. Rate. In the last video, we talked about a ratio. A ratio compares two measurements with the same type of units or can be changed to the same units. Remember, if we wanted to compare inches, we could change feet to inches and we had inches, inches. A rate compares two measurements that cannot be changed into the same unit. Let me show you what I mean. 452 miles per 12 gallons. I can't change miles into gallons, so that makes this a rate. We actually call this miles per gallon. What if I had 35 miles per hour? Once again, I can't change miles into hours or hours into miles. You might know this better as miles per hour. $550 for 16 hours. Once again, I can't change money into hours or hours into money. We would say this is what you get paid per hour. That's a ratio. Let's look at an example. A group of friends are going to split a $47.90 dinner bill between the six of them. How much would each person pay? So we're looking at $47.90 for six people. How would we write that as a rate? Well, just like a ratio, rewrite the first number as the numerator or top of a fraction. The second number becomes the denominator or the bottom of the fraction. So this is what it's going to look like. The only problem is, is that we still don't know how much each person is going to pay. In this case, we need to divide. We're going to take six, the number of friends in a group, and divide it into $47.90. Hopefully you remember when we divide decimals, we bring the decimal straight up. Seven times six is 42, and we're going to subtract to get five. I bring down the nine. I happen to know that nine times six is 54. So I'll subtract again and get a five. I bring down my zero and eight times six is 48. And I have a two. Let's bring down another zero. We'll have three, three times six is 18. And I think that's about all the farther we need to go. Remember, we're talking about money. So we don't need to go to three decimal places. What I did then was looked at $7.983 thousandths and I actually rounded. I rounded to the nearest dollar, so I called it $8 per person. Why did I round up to $8? I mean, it is 7.983. Let me show you. If I take $7.98 and I multiply it by the six friends, we would only get $47.88. We wouldn't have enough to pay for the bill because our bill is $47.90. But if I rounded up to $8 and I took 8 times 6, we would have $48. That's definitely enough to pay for the $47.90 bill. Pretty cool, huh? Now don't forget, you always need to tip. And what we just did does not include the tip. Here's one for you to try. You're going to pause the video, figure out the answer, and then press play to check. All right. Let's read it together. You are planning a big party and need to feed 12 people, but your recipe calls for six pounds of hamburger for eight people. Find the rate of pounds per person, then figure out how much hamburger you need for 12 people. The first part we need to know is how many pounds per person. Well, we know the recipe calls for six pounds for eight people but we want to know how many pounds per one person. I'm going to divide by two in both of them. Notice that they're both even numbers, so I get three over four. I have three pounds for four people. Now, just like the last one, I need to divide. I'm going to take the four people divided into the three pounds. Carry my decimal. Seven times four is 28. I have a two, add a zero, and five times four is 20. What exactly does that mean? Well, it means 0.75 or three fourths of a pound is needed for one person in this recipe. Our question also asks, once we find the rate of pounds per person, 
figure out how much hamburger is needed for 12 people. Well, that shouldn't be so bad, right? How many pounds will we need for 12 people? Well, if we need 0 0.75 for one person, what we're going to do is actually multiply. Yep, that's right. We're going to multiply 0 0.75 times 12. Hopefully you remember how to multiply decimals. 5 times 2 is 10, so I take the 1 and add it above the 7. 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15, so we have 150. I add a 0, 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 7 is 7. We add straight down to get 900. But remember, we have two decimal places, so I need to move two decimal places in the answer. That means you will need 9 pounds of hamburger to feed 12 people. You have a choice between a 10 bag box. Remember, microwave popcorn comes in boxes, so you would have 10 bags in one box, or a six bag box of microwave popcorn. That means that you'd have six microwave bags in the box. 496 is for the 10 bags in one box. 368 is for the microwave popcorn for six bags in the other box. Which is the better price? For these, we're going to write each as a ratio. Let's look at the first one. We'll have $4.96 for 10 bags. Once again, we need to divide. I'm going to divide 10 into 496. I'm going to bring my decimal up. I know that 4 times 10 is 40. And then I bring down my 6. And 9 times 10 is 90. 96 minus 90 is 6. I'm going to add a 0 and 6 times 10 is 60. So this is the price per bag for this box of popcorn. I'm going to round this because it makes our life easier when we round things to money. So 0 0.496 rounds to 0 0.5 or 50 cents. So it turns out it's going to be 50 cents a bag. How much is the other one going to be? Once again, we're going to divide. We're going to take 6 into $3.68, bring up my decimal, 6 times 6 is 36, bring down my 8, it goes in once, and we have a 2, bring down a 0, 3 times 6 is 18, and we're going to stop there. 0 0.613 actually rounds, if we're talking cents, into 61 cents per bag. Now let's think about this. Would you like to pay 50 cents for one bag or 61 cents for one bag? Yeah, I think you'd rather pay 50 cents. So which one is the winner? Yep, $4.96 for 10 bags. That's the best buy. It seems like someone is always getting a headache in my family. I went to the pharmacy to pick up a bottle and I had a couple choices of my favorite brand. Which bottle should I pick? This is where you're gonna practice for me. Which one should I pick? The 200 tablets for $9? or the 75 tablets for $3.75. Pause the video, figure out which one I should purchase, and press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. Did you get the 200 tablets for $9? That's right, let me show you how I did it. I know that it's $9 for 200 tablets. I need to divide. I bring up my decimal. 200 doesn't go into nine and it doesn't go into 90, but it goes four times, sorry about that, four times into 200, so we get 800. We subtract, we're gonna add a zero, and five times 200 is 1,000. So it looks like it's gonna be about five cents per tablet. Remember, I'm rounding to the nearest cent. It makes the most sense. Anyway, 75 tablets for 375? Let's divide. I bring up my decimal. It doesn't go, 75 does not go into 37. 75 times five is 375. So we have zero. Well, hmm, this is confusing because it looks like this is also five cents a tablet. But let's look a little closer. Let's look down at my division. When I divided the first one, I get 0 0.045. When I divided the second one, it is actually 0 0.05. In comparison, 0 0.045 is smaller. Yes, I had to round up for that one. So it turns out 
200 tablets for $9 is the better deal. But remember, how much money you can spend will also determine which bottle you purchase. If these bottles were just for you, why would you get 200 tablets, right? Unless you have many, many headaches. So just because the 200 tablets is the better deal doesn't mean it's the better deal for you or your family. All right, it's your turn for the self quiz. You're going to pause the video, then solve without peeking. When you're ready, you're going to press play to check. All right, now it's time to see how you did. In a hospital, there are six nurses supervising 18 rooms. How many nurses are there per room? There is one nurse for every three rooms. That's the answer. A five pound bag of apples sells for $4.25. How much is it per pound? The bag of apples is 85 cents per pound. This fall, 135 students are taking a math course and 125 are taking an English course. Find the ratio of math to English students. The ratio of math to English students is 27 to 25. How'd you do? For those who got it right, you can continue along. For the rest of us, let's see what I did. For the hospital one, what I did is I know that there are six nurses per 18 rooms. The next thing I did was reduce. I happen to know that one times six is six and three times six is 18. I canceled out the common factor and it turns out that one nurse is needed for three rooms. That's how I get there is one nurse for every three rooms. Let's look at the second question. I have 425 for five pounds. In this case, just like the ones we did previously, we're gonna divide. Bring up my decimal. Eight times five is 40. I'm gonna bring down my five. Five times five is 25. So it turns out that it's 85 cents for one pound. Let's look at the last one. The last one actually is a trick question because look at the last sentence. Find the ratio of math to English students. Yeah, I was a little crazy here. So we're comparing students. In this case, we're gonna reduce. Five times 27 is 135 and five times 25 is 125. I cancel out the common factor and it turns out there are 27 math students for every 25 English students or we can say the ratio is 27 to 25. Awesome. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. Would you like to pin me to Pinterest? I give you the steps right there. Did you also know that I have video guides and worksheets available for all of my pie crustable lecture series? Yeah, just go to Teachers Pay Teachers. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss the new videos. I love making them and I hope you enjoy watching them. Have a request? Let me know! Piecrustable at gmail.com or in this YouTube comment box. Thanks for watching the video and I can't wait you can hang out with me again.